Manipulation. Instinct versus calculated. Many people make the honest mistake of believing that all narcissists operate in a calculated manner. They do not. And as I have explained in the video, do narcissists plan their manipulations? That will give you a greater understanding as to why it doesn't happen. It is important for you to understand that, not only with regard to ensuring that you have a solid understanding of narcissism, but it will also provide you with a degree of reassurance and comfort. As you know, narcissists are divided into four schools, lesser, mid-range, greater and ultra. And lesser, mid-range and greater are divided into sub-schools, lower, lesser, middle, lesser, upper, lesser A, upper, lesser B. Lower mid-range, middle middle range A, middle middle range B, upper mid-range. And then lower greater, middle greater and upper greater. And there are similarities between these schools and considerable differences. And as you listen to my videos and read my work and consult with me, you'll be able to ascertain more and more of the similarities and the differences. Some of those differences appertain to the control over the heated fury. Some of the differences are cognitive function. Some appertain to awareness. Some appertain to the threshold on the ignited fury, the manifestation of that heated fury. Is it heated fury? Is it cold fury? Is it a combination of the two? The sizes of the fuel matrices. The types of manipulation that are utilised. Is there a facade? Is it intermittent? What's the facade based on? Is it helpfulness and pity? General good guy, good girl? Is it based on superiority? Is it based upon success? Some of it appertains to being able to sense the behaviours of the victim and others. There is no sensing. So there is a wide range of differences. And when it comes to our manipulations, we have what is known as differing manipulative palettes. Lessers tend to have narrower ones, mid-range get wider, more you move towards greater, and the greater and the ultra have the largest manipulative palettes. Even then, there may be certain manipulations on the manipulative palette of the greater or the ultra that are not utilised for different reasons. One of the key differences that exists between the schools appertains to how the manipulations are utilised against the victim. Lesser narcissists operate entirely through instinct. They have no self-awareness. Indeed, they will often not even realise that they have done something wrong. Difficult as that may be to believe, their narcissism shields them from it, causing them to not see. And this is why often with a lesser, when you try and point out they've done something wrong, you'll be met with a blank look. What? What's the matter, they'll ask. Why are you crying? They don't see what they have done because they are completely blinded to it by their narcissism and they have no awareness. The mid-rangers, they know that what they have done something, they know that what they have done towards you has caused you a problem. They see the reaction, but they always have an excuse. I know it upsets you when I don't talk to you for a week, but if you didn't get on my case, I would not need to give you a time out. Again, their manipulations are instinctive, and although they tend to be more towards the passive-aggressive, mealy-mouthed, cowardly nature of those snivelling mid-range narcissists, their behaviours are instinctive, although often they give the appearance of calculation because of the increased cognitive function but you must understand it's instinctive and if you struggle to grasp this please do organize a consultation with me and i'll explain it to you in detail to help you grasp it i fully understand why it is often difficult for you to grasp these concepts not because you're stupid but it is an alien concept and of course you have the obscuring effect of your increased emotional thinking Upper mid-range narcissists operate something called instinctive planning, and there will be a separate video addressing this, but in essence what that means is that there will be a degree of planning within a cocoon of their instinct. So it's still instinctive, 
but there's a couple more steps associated with it. The greater and the ultra will have some instinctive behaviours, but the bulk of the behaviours are calculated, planned and assessed. Now, how does that work with regard to the range of behaviours? When it comes to the manipulations, there are in essence two time frames which are applicable. All narcissists have to assert control in the moment. And I want you to imagine a series of ribbons, each representing one second. And at the start of the first second, the narcissist has to assert control. And then when you get into the second second, the need to assert control starts again and again and again and again. Now, of course, it may be comparatively easy. You are signaling that you're under control. So as each second goes by, there is no difficulty for the narcissist. But it is within each second that that control has to be asserted and changes can occur. And that is why, for the lesser and mid-range narcissist, they operate through instinct because it has to be so fast that they haven't got the ability to make a selection so quickly as to assert control within the very, very short time frame. Therefore, their narcissism operates as a form of an automatic pilot. Now, what happens is when you threaten the narcissist's control, and let's say you're proximate to the narcissist, you're in the same room with them, the narcissism basically says, if it had a voice, this individual is threatening our control. We need to assert control over them. Which of the three assertions of control will we use? The narcissism invariably goes to the direct assertion of control first because that allows us to assert control and obtain fuel. And therefore, this is always a consideration. Sometimes that can't be used or it's not working. So the narcissism is forced to the second or third assertion of control. And if you want to understand more about those, please do access the very valuable three assertions of control, which you'll find in the Knowledge Vault. With the direct assertion of control, the narcissist does not do this when they are lesser or mid-range. Ah, this appliance is causing me a problem. They're threatening my control. I now need to assert control over them directly. How shall I do this? Well, I'm a middle lesser, so what I'll do is punch him in the face. That'll give me control. Good, I'll do it. That doesn't happen. Instead, the narcissism selects on behalf of the narcissist that direct assertion control of physical violence and therefore the narcissist immediately implements it. So imagine it's as if the narcissist is stood there waiting to act and needs a weapon and then all of a sudden the weapon appears in his hand chosen for him by his narcissism. He will only be given one weapon in that instant. It might be physical violence. It might be a verbal tirade. It might be shoving somebody. It might be destroying property. But the narcissist is given that one weapon. With the mid-range narcissist, it is the same process. As soon as that mid-range narcissist control is threatened, one weapon appears in their hand. Whether it's a word salad, or a character assassination, or a pity play, or verbal violence, or triangulation. The weapon is placed in the hand of the narcissist, and they are only given one. It is instinctive. Here's the weapon, use it. Here's the weapon, use it. And of course, it can be a different weapon dependent upon the type of manipulation the narcissism, the narcissism has selected for them. But they're only ever given one. They don't, they're not given any choice. The narcissism makes the selection for them, sticks the manipulation in their hand, if you will, and says, go for it. And of course, the type of manipulation will vary dependent upon the type of narcissist and the level of effectiveness. So in some instances, it might be the lower lesser is effectively given a cudgel. The middle lesser might be given a taser. The lower mid-range is given a pistol. The upper lesser type B is given a shotgun. 
And those are the type of weapons, in effect, that are used. So, for the lessers and the mid-range narcissists, it is an instinctive manipulation which is selected for them by their narcissism and it only ever gives them one selection. So they have to use it. They don't stop and go, mm, no, I don't think I'll use that. Give me a different one. They try and use it. If it doesn't work, the narcissism selects a different manipulation for them. Now, what about the greaters and the ultra? Here, the narcissism again selects a manipulation for us to use, but gives us a selection. So, whereas... The lesser and mid-range narcissist is only given one manipulative weapon at a time of varying degrees of effectiveness. The greater and the ultra is given a selection. Five, seven, ten. And the aware greater and ultra is then able to decide, I'll use this. Because the decision is made in a split second. And it is a calculated decision to utilize that for the most effective outcome. So when it comes to the immediate assertion of control in the moment, every single narcissist must achieve that. Lesser and mid-rangers are given no choice as to what they use. They're told by their narcissism. With the greater and the ultra, the narcissism gives a range of weapons and there is a conscious decision made to utilize a particular manipulation, benign or malign. The selection might be all benign. They might be all malign, or it might be a combination of the two. And then the greater or ultra, in a split second, utilizes it. Think, if you will, if you've seen the film The Matrix, and where Neo goes, something along the lines of, we need guns, lots of guns. Well, the lesser does that, and all that appears in his hand is one weapon. The mid-ranger does that, and all that appears in his hand is one weapon. And they use it instinctively and automatically. When it comes to the greater ultra, a rack of weapons appears and a selection is made very quickly by the greater or the ultra to utilize it. And that's where that aspect of our calculation is used with regard to the assertion of control in the moment. The second time frame is planned. Lessers and mid-rangers don't do this. Their narcissism doesn't work to think about what's coming next. And I will be dealing with that with regard to collateral consequences, etc. in another video. But for here, what you must understand, that when it comes to the lesser or mid-range narcissist, they apply control in the instant. They don't plan beyond that. The greater and the ultra will assert control in the instant, but are also capable of thinking about causing an outcome further down the line. And that is a major distinction between us and the lesser and mid-range narcissists. The reason that we are able to do that is as a combination of intellect, the way that our narcissism has evolved, access to greater resource, access to greater manipulations, ability to understand human behavior and sense outcomes and calculate them and assess them to determine the appropriate outcome, access to relevant networks, assistance through coterie and lieutenants. So we assert control in the moment, but we are also able, where deemed necessary, to plan an outcome at a future time point. And there are the distinctions between the instinctive use of manipulation and the calculated one by reference to the four major schools of narcissism. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.